like what Irish music means for me is something completely different from what it means to other people because I have my father, I have the Tulla band, I have my own early years in school, like it means all those things to me. And what does tradition mean? I mean, if tradition is merely the repetition of what something else did, it would be very vacant and empty. And unless it has real life experience for me, it's absolutely pointless. great Irish traditional musician. If Irish traditional music is to survive, it's through people like Martin Hayes. He just pairs the tune down to its, almost sometimes to its bare elements. I think his passion and his romance comes out, and I think that's, uh, that's what grabs people. Now, people are recognizing him and saying, this is the, one of the most exciting players in Ireland. I particularly hear the jazz influence in his tone and his precision. It's not jumping at you. You're sitting back and you're in a trance and it comes across and you hear the beauty of the tune. To me it's a language. To Martin it's a language. It's a language of the emotions. I love his music. He, he gave me great ideas for playing Irish music. I listened to the CD and I thought it was sort of scratchy fiddle music. And then I came to see him and I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what a virtuoso he is. My feet are moving, my hands are clapping, I find myself involved completely physically and mentally in the whole thing. It feels really good, really, really. It touches you in a place that makes you come alive. First time I went to Ireland, I found a four leaf, leaf clover. First time I stepped on Irish soil. You know, this is really, really beautiful playing. It's very gentle, it's very sweet. It's uh, got a lot of character to it. Was there just a fiddle in your house and you, you picked it up? Yeah. Well, there was actually, yeah. My father was a fiddle player. Right. And, um, so I've learned from him. In, in the same way that the children learn language, you know, they don't know anything about grammar. They just start talking, you know? Yeah. And they keep going to, <laughs> and they keep getting corrected and they keep trying to refine it. I think in Clare, music is as important as, as politics or sport or football or hurling. Um, it's as important in some ways as the Catholic Church is. I think to some extent the music is holding its own in terms of the kind of the new globalised MTV culture. It's, you know, it's very much a, a presence in, in world music. In Seattle, Clare looks quite different than when I'm in it. When I'm in Clare, Seattle looks quite different, you know? And so I'm, I'm continually referring those two viewpoints against each other, and it's as if, like, they kind of counterbalance each other. Technically, I live in Seattle. My postal address is in Seattle right now. Um, my, my emotional home is probably County Clare, you know? Um, I have an email address which travels cyberspace with me. Every generation wants to play uh, as their mentors would, would say, for instance, Martin would like to play like his father and Paddy Canny, but he can't help it. You have to bring your own influences in. 
because of the music, I, ha I had made friends with people who were ten times my age. For the most part, I would anxiously await the opportunity to just take my fiddle out instead of t dealing with algebra. And in the morning, after I'd have the breakfast, before I got to school, I'd play a couple of tunes because it felt good. And when I was in my early 20s, I, I kind of started to abuse music a bit. Like, I go, well, I, 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 I used it to make money. Um, and I suppose I didn't believe that one could, like, do something, like, emotional and, and touching and deep within your heart and, and expect to exist in the rational world with it. So I, I, I kind of ignored the possibilities of playing, playing what I felt. Martin and I, I, I think, have a a connection that um, musicians don't often get simply that we both went through the same experiences in Chicago of having to play stuff we didn't particularly like. I, I moved to Chicago in 1985 and uh, I rented the first apartment we could get myself into, you know. And uh, it's funny that that apartment was right across the road from Dennis. It, it seemed like any time you'd see him he was doing something different and well capable of it. And I keep thinking what a versatile guitarist. Now, if I wonder is there any way if we could get him into traditional music, now what would he do, you know, I mean, what would all, would all his background and all his perspective, like, what would he end up playing? I get asked a lot of questions of, um, well, you're bringing jazz elements in, you're bringing classical elements in, and I honestly don't hear that. I hear a great understanding and an affiliation with Irish traditional music in his playing. He has a whole range of chords he could play, play anything, he could play numerous chord progressions. Whenever I might be consumed in, in emotionalism or something that's not entirely Maybe, maybe entirely rational, not that it has to be all the time, but he evaluates it on terms of music. He's a very good example of somebody quite far removed from the culture who actually understands the expression of the tunes at a very deep level. Always when playing, I'm trying to reach deep, go deep inside, and like, well, I don't know what that means, or I don't know how to go about it many times, but I know that the music is locked in a part that's, that's larger and deeper than my petty little needs. This is one of the most extraordinary performances I've seen, and I felt like he was almost levitating off the stage, you know, he was like on fire. His hair was just all over, and he was like rising up. 
but I was seeing pictures going way back to an ancient time. I, ha I had this vision like of uh, the bonfire. I feel like I hear my genetic echo through the music. It's the country of my soul. I mean, I've always loved the, the poetry and the literature. The music, it's not about me, really. Like, the music is the feeling that you experience. See, sometimes people like come to hear music and they go, oh, I don't understand it, you know, and maybe there's something I need to know about this and I don't know enough about it yet. And yet, it, left to their own devices, like without trying to analyze it at all, would most likely pick up on the feeling of it. So for me, like, spirituality and music were never, like, well, I didn't see the connection maybe when I was younger, but now for me, they're inseparable. The effort that I would put into music now would not primarily be on the fingerboard of the fiddle or with the bow. It would be in my daily life and, and how I view life and what I would, where, where I would see myself headed as a person. Um, I, I always consider um, the, the, the actual moment of, of the creation of music to like be the most important part. Like, I mean, live music in a live situation, I always consider more important than recorded music. And would, would, see, would see myself as more of a, a performance artist than a recording artist, for sure. But recording I found useful in that it, it's, it's something to work towards. Um, it's a goal, it's an objective. I'm just going to set it up like I would because I want to record a bit of music with my father. The mini disc is nice because you get random access. It's not quite as, I don't think it's as clean sounding as that. Um, we, we, we set this up all the time, like we were traveling. If we're ever in a B&B &B or a hotel for two days, we'll definitely set it up, you know? <laughs> 